Hello dear students, our today's topic is a very interesting topic and this topic is related with the luxury we have in today's lifestyle. Today's lifestyle had given us this very interesting disease which is called as diabetes mellitus and in this lecture we will go through the introduction and classification of anti-diabetic drugs. So let's have a look at diabetes mellitus. Now the question arises that what is diabetes? What is meaning of this word diabetes and what is the meaning of mellitus? So the meaning of diabetes mellitus is taken from the foreign language words where this die is taken from the Greek word which means through or across. Betis is again taken from the Greek word which means passing or walking and this malitus is taken from the Latin word which means honey or the sweetened compound. So diabetes mellitus is simply stands for passing of the sweetened material through a tube. So we can visualize this in this picture. This is the picture of a blood vessel. This blood vessel is carrying the red blood cell, the insulin hormone and the glucose particles like this. So when or the condition in which there is passing of excess glucose inside the blood vessel, the condition is referred as diabetes mellitus. Now let's look the type of diabetes. The first type and which is most dangerous one is called as insulin dependent diabetes which is also called as type 1 diabetes. In this diabetes the treatment depends upon the availability of either insulin or its analogous materials. The second type is non-insulin dependent diabetes which is also called as type 2 diabetes. For the treatment of type 2 diabetes the oral hypoglycemic agents are used. We clear this point here that for insulin dependent or type 1 diabetes the injectable form of insulin is required while for treatment of type 2 diabetes the oral hypoglycemic agents that means the agents which can be given orally or through mouth can be used. The next type is gestational diabetes. Now gestational refers for the diabetes which is induced through pregnancy. The next type of diabetes is maturity onset diabetes. Whenever the persons acquire the maturity, in most of the cases the physical activities gets decreased, decreased and due to which the glucose produced inside our body is not utilized and that unutilized glucose may flow inside the blood vessel and this gives rise to maturity onset diabetes. The next is metabolic syndrome which is also referred as syndrome X. This type of diabetes occurs due to some defects in the metabolism. The next is drug induced diabetes. There are many drugs which can alter the functioning of the natural hormone insulin. So whenever the functioning of insulin is altered, it will not metabolize 
or it will not utilize the glucose particles and in such condition there is increased level of glucose inside the blood vessel and due to this diabetes is produced the next topic is the diabetes complications now we may wonder that why diabetes is so much dangerous it is observed that the increased production of glucose may harm the various important organs of our body so if we look at the diagram we will find that the diabetes may produce harm on the central nervous system and especially in the brain so in central nervous system it may produce the stroke that is the stop of flow of blood inside the blood vessels the next important organ on which diabetes produce its action is our heart whenever the diabetic conditions are untreated or there is high concentration of glucose such conditions leads to heart attack that means once again the blood flow and ultimately the oxygen flow inside the blood vessels of the heart will get disturbed the next is peripheral artery disease in this condition the arteries which are supplying blood to the periphery especially beneath the waist region that means ultimately to the legs there is decreased flow of blood due to accumulation of glucose particles inside the blood vessels and due to this the condition may arise of gangrene the next important organ on which the diabetes may produce its action is our eyes you can imagine that what will happen if we cannot visualize the things easily so diabetes on eye may produce the condition like diabetic retinopathy that is pathy stands for the damage of blood vessel so retinopathy here stands for damage of blood vessel inside the retina the next is cataract the cataract is nothing but the accumulation of cloud inside the lens due to which the vision gets disturbed the next condition is glaucoma here also there is increased blood pressure inside the blood vessels which are supplying blood to the eye so whenever there is increased blood pressure once again the visualization will get disturbed the next condition is diabetic foot here the foot get swallowed sorry it this get swelled and ultimately there is very decreased sensation due to which many a times the person gets some cuts and the bleeding through the diabetic foot the next is diabetic neuro sorry diabetic nephropathy again here is the suffix pathy which stands for damage of blood vessel and this nephropathy stands for the damage of blood vessel to the vessels which are carrying blood to the nephrons and also there is some damage to the filtering unit of the kidney nephrons the next is peripheral neuropathy once again the suffix is pathy that means here also there is damage of blood vessel to the 
vessels which are carrying blood through the legs so you can understand that why diabetes is so much complicated and why it is that it produce such harmful effects on such very important organs of our body now a question arises that how we will diagnose that whether a person has a diabetes or not so here is a chart which shows the normal and the diabetic levels of glucose inside the blood for normal person the fasting level of glucose is 8200 mg per deciliter deciliter here stands for 10 ml that means when for the normal person about 8200 mg of blood glucose is permitted per 10 ml of the blood so for fasting that means fasting here stands for the condition when we do not consume any food so in fasting condition the normal blood glucose level is 8200 mg per deciliter it is suppose that after taking meal after take, having some meal this blood glucose may rise to 170 to 200 mg per deciliter and after 2 to 3 hours of eating the range this range should be 120 to 140 that means ultimately the blood glucose level for a normal person is considered as 80 to 120 80 for fasting and 120 after 2 to 3 hours of having any meal now whenever there is rise in blood glucose level at fasting after eating and after 2 to 3 hours it is said to have the impaired glucose level if this glucose levels are beyond this limits for example if the fasting glucose shows the value of 126 plus and the value of 2 to 3 hours after meal shows 200 plus we can definitely assure that the person have diabetes one more criteria is utilized to diagnose diabetes of a person now here is this reading which are called as a1c percentage this a1c percentage is nothing but the combination of glucose with the hemoglobin present in our blood so for healthy person this a1c percent should be below 5.6 and for diabetes it is 6.5 and above if through test it is observed that the a1c percent that is the percentage of combining of glucose with hemoglobin is 6.5 and above the person is said to be a diabetic person so for treatment of diabetes some physical exercises and some precautions are needed before any medications here are some preventive measures which we can utilize in our day to day life so the first is walking walking will consume the energy in the form of glucose and this help in reducing the glucose level the second measure is cycling whatever is feasible for us we should go for some physical exercises also we must say no 
to excess sugar because whatever sugar we take will be ultimately converted to the glucose and there will be a rise in glucose level. We must follow the healthy diet chart. That means we must include the fiber materials and the fruits and some proteins in our day-to-day -day meal consumption. We must avoid the use of soft drinks or the carbonated drinks as they contain a very high amount of sugar. Lastly, we must say no to alcohol because alcoholic beverages are also consist of a very high level of sugar molecules and due to which ultimately the glucose concentration is gets increased. So if we wish to prevent ourselves from diabetes, we must have to follow such kind of rules in our day-to-day -day life. For treatment of diabetes, some drugs are used and these drugs are classified into various classes. Now broadly, the anti-diabetic drugs are divided in two classes. The first class is insulin and insulin analogs. These drugs are used for treatment of type 1 diabetes. The examples include insulin and some insulin analogs like Lispro, Espart, Glulysine, Glargin and Detemir. Lispro, Espart, Glulysin, Glargin and Detemir, these are the modified analogs of insulin. The next class is oral hypoglycemic agents. These drugs are used for treatment of type 2 diabetes. And these oral hypoglycemic agents are further subclassified into various classes. The first class is sulfonylurea. The sulfonylurea is further subclassified into two classes. The first class is first generation sulfonylurea from which we have the example like tolbutamide and chlorpropamide. The second class is second generation sulfonylurea from which we have the example like glipizide, glimepiride, gliburide and so on. The next major class of oral hypoglycemic agents is biguanides. From here we have the classical example fenformin and metformin. The next class is thiazolidine dions. From here we have the examples like pioglitazone and rosiglitazone. The next class is meglitinides, from which the examples are repaglinide and nateglinide. The last class is glucoside inhibitors, from which the examples are acarbose and voglibose. So, dear students, that is the classification of the anti-diabetic drug and that is all about the introduction of diabetes and classification of anti-diabetic drugs. So thanks for watching the video. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.